we received those documents from Yeltsin, from Cherner Mirden, and there was a big noise in the press, both here and in the UK, regarding the fact that, you know, as a result of the Queen's visit, that the Russian government had returned this. We were in the late 90s, granted the final documents on, on the parsonage, uh, we're still in process of getting the final document for the church itself. That is why the community still cannot begin full restoration of its unique building, the only example of Victorian church architecture in all of Russia. Occasional visitors see only the parade side, the refurbished main hall. But the daily life of this building and the people it brings together is vibrant like a buzzing beehive. After church services, a hundred voices of friendly conversation echo off the church walls. Almost the same faces could be seen at business conferences organized by St. Andrew's Church. Then the buzzing activity moves to a nearby luxury hotel to hear, for instance, an invited speaker, none other than Dr. David Young, an assistant to former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger of the Nixon White House. Okay. How many uh, North American Canadian But the church building is much more spacious than it seems. To continue the comparison with a beehive, in the many honeycombs of this building, from the basement to the bell tower, in places where the noise quiets down, people of various confessions and nationalities work together every day. The bell tower houses the library of the Anglican Orthodox Education Center, the first such joint center in Christendom. One of the basement rooms is the Substance Abuse Rehabilitation Center run by a Russian Orthodox psychologist, Dr. Yevgeny Protsenko. Uh, Nearby in the former church morgue is one of the classrooms of Ruf, the Russian Orphan Opportunity Fund run by two Orthodox Christians, Georgia and Andrew Williams. I have no experience in education, but the result of doing interviews with Moscow orphanage directors was that it was very clear we needed an educational charity. We realized that our students, our orphanage students, were getting to 16, 17, 18 years old, and they still had several years of their education to complete, and they were going to be out of the orphanages, and if we wanted to continue working with them, we would need to have our own base. The Anglican Church very, very wonderfully uh, provides us with classrooms that we can use. Our students who have a very difficult history of relationship with adults, incredibly important that we provide role models, people who they can trust and people with whom they can develop deep and trusting relationships. Our teachers teach both at schools and institutes. In the evening, they come here to teach us. Not only do the teachers of Roof impart knowledge and simple human warmth to the students, they also teach them a new perception of life, that every person really can shape one's destiny differently. If I don't help myself, then who will? Only those who themselves are able to enjoy life and express profound love are capable of instilling hope in others. <laughs> we got married here in Moscow. That's St. Andrews. That's St. Andrews. Well, in 2001, we went to England because I was planning to study in a seminary to be ordained a priest in the Anglican Church. However, that didn't, that didn't, that didn't work out. And uh, in fact, we ended up we ended up becoming Orthodox in Oxford and then coming back to Moscow. <laughs> I think we could say that neither of us having been Anglicans as children mm -hmm. really came to know the Anglican Church here in Moscow mm -hmm. um, because we were both uh, going to St. Andrews. And um, when we moved back to England, it was a bit of a shock for us because the, the church here isn't exactly what we found Anglicanism to be when we moved back to England. And we just started drifting toward the Orthodox Church here. Gonna make Lenten soup because it's Lent. All the people linked to St. Andrew's Church choose Russia as their home, temporarily or permanently. Each has his own opinion on this. Life in Moscow is good. I found Moscow and Russia an extremely exciting place to, to, to live, and it's never boring. I say every day is a new intelligence test. I feel very, very much at home. 
I know more people now in Moscow and have more friends in Moscow than I have in the United Kingdom. When I first announced to my parents that I was going to be moving out to Russia, a lot of the family were horrified and kept saying to my mother, how can you let your daughter live in that terrible country? My mother is a very, very practical woman and shrugged her shoulders and said she could be going to live in Australia. She's a lot closer in Russia. Right, give it a go. One, two, three. Four. And what would Nicolette, with her absolutely impeccable Russian, be doing in Australia? In Moscow, She's responsible for organizing all the musical events at the church. They hope to buy a new organ, even though some still have hopes of tracking down the original organ that disappeared from the church after the Russian Revolution. What's the idea of these church, these church concerts is, is to promote young Russian musicians so that we can in some way give back to the society that is acting as host to us something of the joy of this building and give them the opportunity to use this wonderful facility. Russians love music. Oh. Now and again, after a concert, some Russians have said, can we come to a Sunday service? And I've said, of course, you may observe, but if you're a member of the Orthodox Church, then you must support your own churches. The Reverend Canon Simon Stevens, chaplain at St. Andrew's Church, an area dean in the world's largest deanery with more than a dozen time zones, now also has diplomatic duties as the representative of the Archbishop of Canterbury to the Moscow Patriarchate. Today, he has his first meeting with Archpriest Sevilla Chaplain Deputy Chairman of the Moscow Patriarchate's Department for External Church Relations. It's good to see spring finally here. Thank you so much for uh, inviting me to be present with you this morning. And I had no idea this church was the department's church, so I feel doubly honoured uh, to have been invited by you. Um, I've thank you very much for coming. I think it was uh, very touching for many parishioners and for the clergy that... Uh, Love for tea has always united the Russians and the English. And today, over a cup of tea, the representatives of both confessions quickly found a common language. That's marvelous, Father. Thank you. I like very much your initiative to uh, hold concerts in the church. Mm. I attended several of them. You were not there, but mm. uh, I think some of your parishioners yeah, were. Yeah. I think it's, it's basically a good idea to organize charity concerts of classical music in places like your church. If you need some supporting campaigning for the return of organ, uh, I'm quite ready to help. Excellent, <laughs> That's fine, because we'd love to have that. In, my church. in fact, the main objective of the meeting is to discuss preparations for the World Summit of Religious Leaders due to be held in Moscow in July. But over a cup of tea, it's sometimes much simpler to talk about pressing problems that stand before different branches of Christianity and to establish a cordial personal relationship. I hold in my hands the symbols of both Eastern and Western Palm Sunday. Uh, in, the, in the tradition of the West, we distribute to the faithful palm crosses, many of them made in Africa. Uh, in the Eastern tradition, now that the snow is melting, uh, the priest will bless and distribute willow as a symbol that we worship and work for the same Lord. East and West, we have the same baptism, the same Lord, and we work together for the salvation of God's kingdom and our work here in Russia. These crosses are made on the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania by members of the Maasai tribe. When they have made them for us, they then cross the border into Nairobi and are placed by the British ambassador in Nairobi in the diplomatic bag for London. And then from London they change diplomatic bags and finally they make the long journey from Nairobi to London, London to Moscow. And then on Palm Sunday, at the very beginning of our liturgy, these blessed palms are given to everybody in the congregation. Because people are a long way 
from home. It is important that on Christmas Day and Easter Day and with Sunday they can come to a church and express their love of God and Christ in a liturgy they understand. Rather the body of Christ in eternal Rather the body of Christ Sister, the body of Christ keep you in eternal.